Well, I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld such an eerie sight. Oh, my monster from his lab began to rise, and suddenly, to my surprise, they did the mash. They did the monster mash, the monster mash. It was a graveyard smash, they played the mash. It caught on in a flash, they played the mash. They did the monster mash from my laboratory in the castle east to the master bedroom where the vampires feast. The ghouls all came from the humble abodes to get your jolts from my electrodes. They played the mash. They did the monster mash, the monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. They played the mash. It caught on in a flash. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. The zombies were having fun. The party had just begun. The guests included the Wolfman, Dracula, and his son. The scene was a rockin', all were diggin' sounds. Igor on the chains, backed by bang hounds. The coffin bangers were about to arrive with the vocal group. The crypt kicker find they played the mash. They played the monster mash, the monster mash. It was a graveyard smash, they played the mash. It caught on in a flash, they played the mash. They played the monster mash. Well, louder in his coffin, Drax voiced in green. Seems he was bothered by just one thing. He opened the lid and shook his fist and said, Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash, the monster mash. And it's a graveyard smash, it's now the mash. It's now the monster mash, the monster mash. It's now the Monster Mash. Now everything's cool and Drax a part of the band. And my Monster Mash is a hit of the land. For all of the living, this song was meant to. But if you get to my castle, tell them Boris sent you and you can mash. Well, you can Monster Mash, the Monster Mash. And it's a graveyard smash and you can mash. And you'll catch on in a flash and you can mash. Well, you can Monster Mash, whoa. Let's greet each other this morning. Do the mash. Ah, mash good. <laughs> Okay, um, I didn't know what to say after that. I was surprised myself, just as surprised as you guys were. Um, welcome to Fall City Christian Church. We are glad you're here. I just want to let you know that that song has nothing to do with Jesus. Um, but we are uh, entering into like the Halloween season, and our series is, is uh, about that house. And we're talking about the different houses uh, that you approach whenever you're trick-or-treating. So we wanted to get a little festive, set the tone, kind of be a bit immersive, and uh, just wanted to have a little fun. Is it okay for Christians to have fun? I think so. And so we take God seriously, but we don't take ourselves uh, very seriously. I mean, look at us. I mean, come on. Um, but uh, we just, we just want to say welcome. Uh, we're going to jump into some worship songs here uh, that are actually toward God and about God. <laughs> Not about, like, Frankenstein and Dracula and stuff like that. Um, don't forget Sunday nights. Even if you don't play volleyball, come and support us. Right? Monday nights, I'm sorry. Even if you don't play volleyball, come and support us. Um, we've got some people who are great armchair quarterbacks that like to talk smack from the bleachers. Um, and that's okay. We welcome that. I'm not going to mention any names, Ken. But... Um, <laughs> But we want you guys to come and hang out, and um, it's just an opportunity for us to do something outside the walls of, of this building. So uh, we're going to get going. This is the offering. It's an opportunity for us to, uh, to bring back a portion of what God has already given us, and it helps us to do cool things in the community, and it also helps us to do cool things in here, right? All right. Sing to him. Lift his name. Yes, we will.
Well, I can own one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now. And in the waiting, the same God who's never lame is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you up in the lowest valley. And yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I count on one thing. Well, I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. And you won't fail me now. And in the waiting, the same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you up in the lowest valley. And yes, I your name. Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh yes, I will for all my days. Oh yes, I will. And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of God. Nothing against any cares, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. But nothing against any cares, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. But nothing against any cares, and I choose to praise. To glorify, glorify the name of all names. The nothing against any gifts. Oh yes, I will lift you up in the lowest valley. And yes, I will bless your name. Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all. For all my days, oh yes, I will. For all my days, oh yes, I will. Amen. We take time each week to step out from our daily routine. our Savior that gave it all for us. Our Savior that went through the cross that suffered and bled and died on our behalf. That took our sin debt and the weight therein upon the cross. Really gave up his life. A perfect life to cover that sin. We thank him in this time Remember him, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Because it's why we're here. It's why we have life. It's why we sing. It's why we rejoice to know that our past is gone. And that we can boldly come before the Father with confidence. Knowing that he has us. And that we're his saved by the blood of his son, the blood of the lamb. We eat the bread that represents his body that was broken, and we drink the cup that represents his blood that was poured out on that tree. The night before Jesus was betrayed and turned over, he took his Israel, he took, he took his friends, his disciples into the upper room, performed this exact same ceremony celebration of the Passover, but this moment meant so much more. It was the true representation of what the Passover was supposed to mean. Sacrifice of a lamb. 
boldly come before you and proclaim your name. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus. And what he means in our lives. What he means for this community. What he means for this world. And the fact that we'll be able to spend an eternity with you, worshiping and praising you and thanking you for calling us to us. Thank you for this time that we have right now. It's in your son's name, Jesus, that I pray. Amen. Amen. You never stop, you 
never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And we make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are we make miracle. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 See now, that is who you are. 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 Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are, we make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. God, that is who you are. All right, so new month, new series, new season. It's pumpkin spice season, y'all, right? Do we have any pumpkin spicers out there? Nobody? One, two, you got three, four? Okay, you guys are just shy about it, right? Stereotypical pumpkin spicers. For me, though, it's Halloween season. I love Halloween. This is a, a true story. Um, whenever we moved into our, our house a few years ago, uh, we were deciding whether we were going to get a uh, uh, dish again. And uh, our reason for getting Dish Network was so that we can watch Halloween Wars every October <laughs> as a family. That is the only reason that we have Dish Network. Now, there are a lot of other good things uh, that we watch, but the main reason was Halloween Wars. I just love Halloween. It's a fun time. Um, I remember uh, growing up as a kid and trick-or-treating, and it seemed like um, there, was always, there were always different houses. You know, you'd have, um, you'd have houses that were all themed out. Uh, there was one place in, in the town that I grew up in um, they even, you, you went into, it, it was an old restaurant, you went to the restaurant, and they had things all made up, and it was interactive, and it was really gross and really scary, but they gave really good candy. So you were willing to endure the gross and the scary so that you could get the really good candy. And so there's all these different kinds of houses. And so I decided to come up with a, a series called That House, right? We all know That House, 
Uh, for some of you, that house is the house that gives the full-size candy bars, right? You always go to that house. Uh, for some of you, that house is the house that is super themed out, or there's one in the neighborhood that we trick-or-treat in that has, like, clowns with chainsaws and crazy stuff like that. It, it's pretty awesome. Um, or you have that house, the one that gives out toothbrushes or raisins or something healthy, right? And so we're going to kind of go over these different kinds of houses, and my prayer is that we can actually have a dose, a little bit of a dose of each of these houses, because I think each of these houses uh, offer something great, and then there's some things to look out for. So our church should be a a well-rounded and missional house. We should be a well-rounded and missional house. And I'd like to take a, a few weeks to explore some of, uh, some of these and see what the, what the good things are that we can hone in on via trick-or-treating, right? Uh, I know this is, uh, this is an unorthodox thing to talk about or, or, or an uncommon way to go about uh, preaching the gospel, but I think, we need to, I think we need to do that sometimes, right? And so we love trick-or-treating. I love to trick-or-treat. Actually, last year, I couldn't trick-or-treat, and it liked to kill me. I had just had surgery, and so I sat on the front porch of Aaron's grandparents in a wheelchair, um, and I handed out candy, which was fun, but not as fun as going to trick-or-treat with my boys. And we all have uh, our spots where we trick-or-treat, right? You guys just have those spots you go to every year where you trick-or-treat? I don't even know what the name of the neighborhood is that we trick-or-treat in. It's the one where the grills live, though. Um, Aaron's grandparents live there. We have our traditions. Uh, we go to Aaron's grandparents. We do pizza, and then we trick or treat, and we come back, and we kind of divvy up the candy, and we get more pizza. That's that's how it goes. And so um, we chose this by several criteria. Number one, we got family there. Number two, it's a tradition. Number three, it's a safe place. And number four, most importantly, candy volume. Right? <laughs> candy volume. Um, We're going to talk about several different types of houses uh, that you may find trick-or-treating. And today is just the regular house. Just the regular house. The house that you can count on, right? The regular house is just a a typical house that you can count on that you know every year is going to have some candy. Nothing too crazy going on. Now, um, most of these houses have somebody sitting on the front porch, Or maybe somebody will come to the door, maybe a couple is dressed up, and and they'll sit there, and they'll hand out the candy. Um, They love to celebrate and see the kids running around, and they're generally excited to see trick-or-treaters, all right? But they don't do anything too crazy. They're excited to see people come, but they don't do anything too crazy. And and these people are handing out uh, one of three different kinds of candy, all right? The first one is the common candy. Just the common candy. Now, when we go trick-or-treating, there are some candies that we can count on. Mini Hershey's. Mini Hershey's stuff, right? Mr. Good Bar. Um, the, the Hershey's Dark. I always steal the Hershey's Dark from my kids because that's my gangster name. Dark Chocolate. I'm just saying. Uh, you can always count on those, those small bags of M&M's or the small bags of Skittles or the two-pack of Starburst, Right? And it's a bad day when you get two yellows. It's a good day when you get two pinks, right? These are the things that you pretty well know that will be a part of your Halloween night. These are the the common candies, right? They're reliable, and they give us what we came for. Candy that we don't mind eating, right? That they, they get the point. The point is candy. And as a church, we will always be a common candy house. We will always be a common candy house. If you ever come here and you don't hear the gospel, then we aren't doing our job. Our common candy is the gospel, all right? Something that you can count on when you come to this house is the gospel, is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. There are going to be all kinds of other things we talk about, but every Sunday you will hear about the gospel. That is our common candy, and those are the things that you can count on. That is the point to us. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, uh, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth. He says, For I delivered to you as first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. 
He says of first importance. This is the point. The gospel is the point. Paul writes to this church in Corinth, the first importance. He's saying, I know that there's a lot of things going on. I know that there's a lot happening. I know that you can be overstimulated in this life and, and, and when it comes to trick-or-treat and in this environment and in this season. But he says of first importance, I need you to focus on what the point is. The point of absolutely everything is the gospel. And, and Corinth was a large city. There was a lot going on. It was halfway between Athens and Sparta. If you're redneck, it's Athens and Sparta, okay? And, and Athens is in, in Georgia, and uh, Sparta is where they do the race car things over in Kentucky, right? Um, but it's halfway between Athens and Sparta, and so uh, there were a lot of things going on, a lot of travel going through there. There was uh, a lot of trade going through there, and because of that, there were a lot of different people from different religions, and they brought different flavors of different idols uh, to the area. And so as the, as the New Testament church was starting there, you would start to see that um, some of these other uh, religions and faiths would influence what's happening in the church in Corinth. And so Paul had to write to them, and he says, of first importance, I need you to understand and get the point here. Because it, it, it made it awful hard not to blend other religions with Christianity at this time. Because there was so much influence from so many different places. It's, they were overstimulated. There was a lot going on. Don't we deal with that today? Aren't we overstimulated? And there's just so much going on. So Paul says, let's grab hold of one foundational thing. Of first importance, Jesus. Jesus is our common candy. That's the one thing that you can come and you can count on every time you come to Falls City Christian Church. Every time you come here, you will hear the gospel. He lays the gospel out as the foundation for everything. Essentially, this is the porch light of the church, right? I don't let my kids trick-or-treat at houses that don't have their porch light on, right? Because if their porch light ain't on, I don't think they're interested, right? And so we're interested. And so our porch light, the, what we shine is going to be the gospel. What we're peddling is going to be Jesus. Our foundation is going to be the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And let me tell you something. I do not let my kids trick or treat at houses that don't have their porch light on. I do not let my kids go to places that aren't given common candy out, Right? If they don't have the intention of, of, of bringing in the trick-or-treaters and having that experience, they don't, they don't go. They don't go. We don't need the, the creepy house without the, without the porch light on. As far as, I, as far as I'm concerned, those people are sketchy. Sketchy people. Another kind of candy that you get whenever you go trick-or-treating is old school candy. You know what I'm talking about with old school candy? Because I want to dive a little deeper on this. You get into the houses that have the old school candy, stuff like those black and orange peanut butter thingies, right? You know what I'm talking about? The stuff that'll, that'll pull the fillings out of your teeth, yeah? Or Charleston chews, yeah, or cow tails or whatever, uh, dum-dum suckers, lollipops with the little loop thingy, the safety pop things, yeah? Candy corn, you get the little bags of candy corn, or bazooka bubble gum, Yeah? That's old school candy. You got some people that just give old school candy. And let's be honest here. These are the candies that sit in the bowl for a while, right? Sometimes they make it to Thanksgiving. Sometimes these candies make it all the way to Thanksgiving. Or if you got a sweet tooth and there ain't nothing else in the house, then you go and you get one of those peanut butter things. Or you go get you a dum-dum or you, you chew on some bazooka, which doesn't pull the fillings out, but it may break your teeth off on the first chomp, right? Um, uh, and, and, and I want to be, be completely transparent with y'all here. I appreciate old school candy. I like old school candy. As a matter of fact, I like the peanut butter thingies. And I like candy corn. You can hate on me all you want. I like candy corn. M&Ms and some peanuts all rattled up in there. It's basically manly pumpkin spice at that point, right? That's what it is. 
<laughs> I know, that's why you need the candy corn, the peanuts, and the M&Ms. Some nails and beef jerky. Duct tape. All right. <laughs> I, I like candy corn. Um, so why do you think we always end up with these? Like, why do you think every time we go trick-or-treating, you, you're not going to go trick-or-treating and not get the peanut butter thingies. You're not going to go trick-or-treating and not get some candy corn. You're not going to not get dumb, dumb suckers, Right? Why do you think we always get old school candy? Is it tradition, maybe? Is it nostalgia? I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but my kids leave it for me to eat, right? I, I, don't get me wrong. I think it's important that my kids try this candy, but I believe there, there is value in this candy. I believe that it represents a time when things were a bit safer, Right? It represents a time when the kids can run around and, and go, go trick-or-treating without the parents worrying themselves to death. I believe that there's a bit of nostalgia, and I believe there's a bit of tradition that comes with this, this old-school candy. But I also believe that if it were all old-school candy that we got, trick-or-treating would still be fun, but the candy wouldn't be eaten, right? you still go trick-or-treating, but you'd be better off being like Charlie Brown. Get some rocks in your pillowcase, right? Now, it would end up going to waste. It would end up going into the garbage because tradition and nostalgia should never be the point. It has value. I like it. I appreciate it. I enjoy it, even. But tradition is not the point. Old school is not the point. I want you to check this out. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees here in Mark chapter 7. He says, now when the Pharisees gathered to him uh, with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with, uh, ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed for the Pharisees, and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as washing of cups and pots and copper vessels uh, and, and dining couches. What's a dining couch? I think I like that. I want a dining couch. Is Aaron in here? You think Ikea makes a dining couch? I'll cuss a lot when I'm putting it together, but I'll enjoy it when I'm eating, Okay. Uh, and the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, uh, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, well, did Isaiah um, prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, the, the people honors, the, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me in vain. Do they worship me, teaching his doctrines and commandments of men? You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. Let me tell you something. There ain't nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, I prefer to wash my hands before I eat. There's nothing wrong with doing the dishes or even wiping down the dining couch every once in a while. Okay? I, there's not a problem with that. But the, but the problem is that became the point to these guys. Their tradition became the point and now all of a sudden the gospel and who God is, and everything he's done, and everything that we're supposed to be is not the point anymore. It is, did you do what the tradition says you need to do? The Pharisees have an issue with the way the disciples roll. They're hanging on tra to tradition. You want to know why? Because it gives them power. Because it allows them to leverage their position in order to stay in the spot that they want to stay in. And we do that too. I think in the United States, a, a lot of times it has to do with safety. We love tradition because it seems like it brings us back to times when it was safer. So they leverage tradition because of power. We kind of leverage it because of safety because we're afraid of so much. And don't get me wrong, there's stuff to be afraid of. But we can't be so afraid of everything that we throw out the conquering power of the gospel. Right? Right? Jesus says, wait a minute, you're missing the point. You've, you've adopted these traditions of men over the commandment of God. It's not bad until it becomes the point. It's not bad until it overshadows 
the gospel, right? Because nothing overshadows the gospel. Nothing should. We should never allow it to. But in the end, nothing ever will anyway. So even if you allow your fear or your power or whatever it is to overshadow the gospel, in the end, you lose. Right? You lose. And I will enjoy uh, some, some candy corn, but I'm not going to make my kids eat it if they don't want it. It's more for me, right? I'm going to enjoy some candy corn, some of those peanut butter thingies, but as a principle, I'm not going to force it on other people. I'm not going to say, there's no such thing as Halloween without candy corn. Some of y'all might wish that. Just like there's no such thing as fall without flannels and boots and vests and somebody, some sorority girl holding a pumpkin spice mocha, right? Right? It's just, uh, th- there's no way. I value old school candy. I value tradition. I value nostalgia. Heck, I even like some of it. I went uh, to, to hear my brother preach a couple weeks ago at the church I grew up at. All hymns, it's super, it's super traditional, and um, it was a bit of a breath of fresh air for me. I can't believe I'm admitting this, because I like the way, I like the way we rock up here. Um, but it was, it, it was a situation where I could sit and just kind of take it in, and, and I hadn't sang a, a whole lot of hymns in a while, and they came back to me, and I actually remembered them. And it was, it was kind of a, a good thing. But see, my goal isn't to convert people to old school candy. My goal isn't to convert people to tradition. My goal isn't to constantly bring up the nostalgia. My goal is to bring the gospel, right? My goal is to introduce them to Jesus. You will see traditional aspects of our church service. Dang, last week we had a pitch-in dinner. That's pretty old school, right? I mean, whenever there's casseroles and four different shades of macaroni and cheese, you know you're rocking it uh, traditionally, right? But if things get crazy and tradition goes away, if things get crazy and nostalgia goes away, if we're always giving the gospel, then we have a strong foundation, right? If we are always standing on the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then it doesn't matter if it's traditional, if it's old school, if it's new school. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world around us. We've got the gospel, and it's steady, and it's stable. And the final candy is the new school candy. You know what I'm talking about whenever I'm talking about new school candy? Anybody? When it comes to new school candy, I'm not, I'm not really a fan. I'm not a fan of, like, gummy brains, Right? Or the gummy Krabby Patties. Those things suck. Those things are terrible. Right? The new school candy isn't all that great. Or the wax vampire fangs with the blood in them, so when you bite into it, it gets all over the place. I'm not a fan of those. Or warheads. Like, honestly, don't give me warheads when I'm, I mean, don't give my kids warheads when they're trick-or-treating. And one thing I really hate, this is my soapbox. I'm allowed, I'm, allowed to, I'm allowed to express this. I hate nerds ropes. That just, it just doesn't feel right to me. Nerds ropes. If you're going to get licorice, make it chewy. If you're going to get nerds, make it crunchy. But don't mix the two. All right? I'm not a fan of new school candy. This year, they've introduced zombie Skittles. Zombie Skittles. It's like candy roulette, okay? Some of them are good and some of them suck. I, I don't want to know. I, I don't want to know. Like, I, I'll, I'll eat regular Skittles, but don't give me something that might make me gag in front of everybody and embarrass me, right? I'm a, I'm a screamer when I throw up. I tear up. It's terrible. I don't, I don't want to eat anything that's going to make me gag. New school candy sucks a little. It's... It, 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 it's it's like there's some sort of, there's got to be a novelty to it, right? It's got to be, um, it's got to be the gummy brains or the Krabby Patty or whatever movie's out. I ate, a, I ate a chocolate frog because of Harry Potter once. It was all right. It was all right. Um, but I just lost everything. Okay, hang, hang on. 
there we go. Um, it's like there's some sort of novelty to it. It's fun, but the aftertaste generally isn't something to, to, to be savored. And it's always something fun and interesting, but I always seem to want to wash it down with a good old Reese cup, right? Or a Reese pumpkin, or a Reese, anything Reese, I think, is safe. And why is that? Well, I think it's because the value isn't in the candy itself, but the value is in the novelty of it, right? The value is in uh, the weirdness or the coolness or the fun part of it, and that's okay. I'm, I'm down with that, but that doesn't typically last long. It doesn't typically stick around. It's not steady. Um, Ten bucks says that zombie Skittles aren't going to be around next year, all right? I'm going to just about guarantee that you will not be able to find zombie Skittles next year. Last year, you could find uh, Skittles that were, what was it, like spicy and sweet, and there were Skittles with like habanero and stuff in them. Can't find them today, can you? Why? Because of the novelty. And it's going to be the same thing with those. And so a little bit of novelty is good. It's fun. I think Monster Mash was that. But I don't know that it's going to be a staple worship song for us. I just don't think it's going to happen. I'm okay with a little bit of novelty, but that isn't the basis by which we do it. We were just trying to set an environment here. An environment so that we could talk about Halloween candy. No, I'm just kidding. So that we could talk about Jesus, right? And a, a little bit of novelty is good, but just like tradition, it cannot be the point. It cannot be the end-all, be-all. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 12 through 15 says this, We are to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain uh, to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, uh, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and, and, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, uh, but by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. You see, if we are just in it for the novelty, it's going to change so much that there's nothing to hold on to. It's like the wind. It's to and fro, Right? It bounces back and forth, and, and it's constantly changing, and it's constantly shifting, like Nick Spray's style, okay? One minute he's got skinny jeans, the next minute he's got full-on camo that's baggy and rolled up almost to his knees, right? The next minute he looks like Joe Pesci from Home Alone with his little, with his little black hat on, right? <laughs> I love it. I appreciate it. You make us cooler because you're here, Nick. I love you. You've got to keep us on our toes, right? You see, the novelty, just for, for, for novelty's sake, it's going to change so much that you can't hold on to anything. So even if you decide you actually like something, even if something happens and you are demented enough to like a, a gummy Krabby Patty, all right, it's going to be gone before you even realize it. And then you're stuck trying to fill that that crabby patty void in your in your heart and your stomach right you see with if it's just novelty then you never have anything to grab onto the world has moved on to the next thing and then you're bouncing around and trying to find something uh, to grab and once again that is why the gospel is our foundation that is why the gospel is our common candy. That is why we can be the house that people can come and count on getting something that they can sink their teeth into. Something that is going to nourish them and, and, and change them and excite them all at the same time. Something that always has been, always will be. The gospel. The fact that Jesus came, was buried, beat sin and hell and death and resurrected. That is what we are handing out. Now, I, I'm okay with a little bit of novelty. All right? We'll try new things. We'll have some fun. We will indulge in a little bit of novelty, but never, never, ever at the expense of the gospel. Never, ever to overshadow the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Because that is not the point. 
novelty, tradition is not the point. The gospel is the point. I, I want to make sure I get that through, through our heads here. The gospel is always the point. So what does that look like for us? Because uh, we, we're not interested in being a, a, a typical church, if that's what you... We're interested in doing things a little different, but not for novelty's sake. How are we supposed to be? Acts 2 verse 47 says, They were praising God and having favor with all people. The Greek for the word all literally means all. Everybody. People who were like us, people who weren't like us, people who liked us, people who didn't like us, people that we liked, people that we didn't. I'm just kidding. We're not supposed to not like people. See, you guys, you guys are jerks. You guys are jerks, right? Um, no, favor with all people. We're supposed to be able to, to communicate in a way that impacts everybody. Not just people who are like us. Not just traditionals. Not just the people that are new school or, or however you want to say it. And the Lord added to their number day by day, day, by day those who were being saved. The Lord added those because the people were being who it is that they were supposed to be. They weren't being tossed back and forth by the winds of our culture. And they weren't anchored down to the traditions of the past to the point where they can't take another step forward. They were able to be relevant and they were also able to be steady in who Jesus Christ is, not in what the culture was doing or what the culture used to be like. So I say, as a house, we always have our porch light on. Always have our porch light on. If anybody wants to come up to our place, they know that they're going to get some. They're going to get some common candy. They're going to get the gospel, right? They are, they're also going to get a little bit of old school here. We may just sprinkle out a little bit of candy corn from time to time, right? And they're going to get a little bit of new school, too. We may sprinkle out a series that's based on 21 pilots. That's not necessarily old school, is it? You see, the point is always going to be the gospel, though. That's always going to be the point. No matter what we talk about, it's always going to be about how Jesus redeemed us and reconciled us back to the Father. And so I'm going to reread this verse that I read at the beginning because I think it's important. The Apostle Paul writing to the church in Corinth in the midst of, of, of just a craziness of culture, in the midst of, 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 of just being overwhelmed by everything that's kind of coming in and coming through and happening around this city, all the different cultures, all the different religions. He says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures of first importance, the gospel. Father, we thank you so much for this day of life you've given us. We thank you for the fact that you, you're consistent, you're constant. Lord, that you, that you always have been you are and you always will be. Lord, we thank you for the fact that we have a foundation of the gospel to build everything else around, Lord. We thank you for the fact that we have your word and that, that it is so, uh, so alive and breathing and relevant that we can take it and, and it applies to our culture and our circumstance and our situation. Lord, we thank you for the lessons that we have learned uh, from the past and we pray that we can learn those and, and step uh, in such a pure way into the future. I pray for progress, for who we are as a church, but in all things, Lord, I pray that you allow us, that you make us, that you help us to keep the first thing first, and that's the gospel. Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So next week, we're going to talk about the Help Yourself house, all right? Some people might call it the just take one house, but you know nobody ever just takes one, right? It's the help yourself house, and we're going we're gonna to learn about some of, the, some of the good aspects of a help yourself house, and we're going to learn about maybe some of the bad aspects.
of a Help Yourself house. So you guys have a great week. If you got free time uh, Monday night, come watch us uh, play volleyball. I've got a new part to my uh, volleyball ensemble. All right. We kind of went with the Saved by the Bell theme. And they're not hot pants, I promise. They're not hot pants. I would look like a busted can of biscuits in those things. Um, but they are jams. Do you guys remember jams? They're super bright. They're super long. I imagine I'm going to look like a character off of Rugrats. But somebody got them for me, and I'm going to wear them for the remainder of the season. It's going to be awesome. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next week.